she, she uh, took him from me and said that it's over with. He's gone. <laughs> Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Patricia Stallings. Viewer discretion is advised. Patricia and David Stallings were a young couple who had just had a baby in 1989. Ryan Stallings was born on April 4th, 1989. The family lived in Jefferson County in Missouri. I guess it's pretty near or in St. Louis. On July 9th, 1989, then 24 year old Patricia Stallings would rush her son Ryan, who was only three months old at the time, to the hospital. He had been throwing up, he was very, very ill, and she didn't know why. The symptoms, according to Patricia, had started just a few days prior on July 7th. So the hospital staff was working on Ryan and they would take some routine you know, blood work to see if there was anything in his system causing this sudden illness. And a couple hours later, they come back to Patricia and tell her there are very high levels of ethylene glycol in Ryan's system. This is something commonly found in antifreeze. There were also high levels of acetone in his system, which is something commonly found in nail polish remover. And so the, the staff there at the hospital told Patricia and David, your son had to have been poisoned because these aren't normal things that would be in a person's body. He had to have ingested them somehow. Apparently they use something called gas chromatography, a special device. That's how they determined that these substances were in his bloodstream. And the staff there asked Patricia and David, like, do you have antifreeze in your home? And David's like, yeah, I just actually worked on building up a new radiator or something. And he said he always had uh, antifreeze in the garage. And Patricia's like, yeah, I have a nail polish remover because I wear nail polish and I need to remove it. So of course it is. And they're, that's when the police come in and they start asking them both questions like, well, you know how Ryan would have ingested these things. And both of them said, no, I had, we had no idea. So while there was an investigation going on, Ryan Stallings was put into protective custody and he was only allowed to have supervised visits for one hour at a time, I think once a week with his parents, Patricia and David. They had a meeting with, with Ryan on September 1st, 1989. This is an image I'm showing, it's just a recreation of that meeting. And apparently there was a point in time when everyone but Patricia and Ryan was out of the room. So it was just Patricia with the baby. And within, I guess, a few minutes, you know, Ryan had been feeding from a formula bottle, but everything was fine then. However, just a couple of days after this, on September 4th, 1989, Ryan was rushed back to the hospital because he was once again having the exact same symptoms as before. However, he wasn't living with Patricia or David at this point. He was in the custody of the state. Once again, they find high levels of what they say is antifreeze and acetone or, you know, the ingredients used in those substances were found in his body again. And at this point, Patricia is actually arrested and she is charged with assault because she was the last person with Ryan in that room by herself and they believed that somehow some way she poisoned him she they believe, believe that she had poisoned him prior and poisoned him again when she had him alone for a moment so she was arrested and charged with assault meanwhile David is at the hospital and he is sitting there hoping against all hope that his son is going to improve again, but that isn't the case this time. Uh, Ryan's actually doing, he was doing really, really bad. They told David he isn't gonna make it, and you need to make the decision of, do you wanna take him off of the machines, off of life support, basically? And he had to make that really horrible decision. And this is a clip from Unsolved Mysteries where David was interviewed, and you can kind of just hear his, how it went for him. I told him, I go ahead and shut the machines down. 
but I wanted to be in there with him. So for three hours, I sat there with him in my arms, knowing that Patty couldn't be there, watching this meter on this machine go down each time his heart would beat. It was hard. It's something I would never ask anybody ever to do. Approximately about 6.30, a doctor came in and she shut the machine down so I could not see any more of his heart rate. She, she uh, took him from me and said, that it's over with, he's gone. They called me back about nine o'clock that night and I, I went up to the phone and it was David's voice and he told me he died. And I started begging that he could come up and see me. And this deputy on duty said he could. So. <laughs> Obviously, it was heartbreaking and devastating to David and to Patricia. But Patricia is being accused of doing this. She's being accused of killing her baby. He was only five months old. So now they've upped the charges against Patricia Stallings to murder. And all of this is being based off of these lab tests that found ethylene glycol and acetone in Ryan's system. I guess they also found crystalline structures in his brain, which were indicative of like being poisoned by antifreeze. While they, while Patricia is in prison awaiting a trial, uh, it gets delayed because Patricia becomes pregnant. Um, her and David, you know, shortly before all of this happened, they conceived a child and this is, they are about to have a baby. And so the, the trial was delayed for some time. In February of 1990, their second son, DJ Stallings was born. But this time he was immediately uh, taken into protective custody. He was put into the, the foster system while the trial was going to be happening. And David and Patricia, even though she was in prison waiting a trial, they were still allowed because they were his parents to have the same type of setup as before with like these little one hour meetings with their son in the presence of, uh, you know, someone they're supervising. This time, nobody ever left the room with Patricia, so there was always somebody in the room when they were with DJ. But then here's the kicker. Little DJ began to experience the exact same symptoms that Ryan had experienced uh, leading up to his unfortunate death. Everything was the same. One thing wasn't the same, though. He wasn't in the custody of Patricia or David. He wasn't in that home. He was in protective custody in the foster system. So if he's experiencing the exact same symptoms that Ryan had, how can they, they can't say that she poisoned him. So DJ was in the hospital for some time and they found something, I guess, different with him. This time they go to a different hospital. It's not the same hospital that they went to with Ryan. And he was diagnosed as having, I'm gonna probably say this wrong, methyl anomalic acidemia, or as it's more commonly known to as MMA. And that's what I'll say from this point moving forward. This is a, or at least back then, was an incredibly rare genetic disease. So now they're thinking, okay, well, what if Ryan had that thing? What if he had MMA? And so they actually managed to get tissue samples from Ryan's remains and they test those tissue samples. And they, now in these tissue samples, they apparently also find the same thing with like the antifreeze and the acetone, but tests were now more indicative of him actually having MMA. So Patricia Stallings defense attorney said, well, that's it then. Ryan had MMA and that's what he died from. He didn't die from poisoning. But the judge said, okay, well, what proof are you going to provide that there wasn't poisoning? And he really didn't have a response to that. And so the judge would not allow it. 
they would not allow him to present this as only, you know, only with evidence of evidence of dying of MMA. However, he was permitted to explain to the jury that Ryan could very well have died from natural causes. And apparently the prosecutor said, quote, you might as well speculate that some little man from Mars came down and shot him full of some mysterious bacteria, end quote. Wow, what a professional statement that is. The problem is though with that statement is this isn't some alien thing, this is a genetic disorder. And to say that is just, I'm sorry, but that's just kind of fucked up. Her defense attorney didn't provide any character witnesses for Patricia, even though she told him like, hey, I have several character witnesses who can tell you that I is not this, I'm not this mom they're trying to paint me as, this evil mom who poisons her kids. There's no abuse. There was there were witnesses, but the defense attorney just decided not to use them. So on January 31st, 1991, Patricia Stallings is actually convicted of first degree murder of the murder of her five month old baby, Ryan Stallings, and she is sentenced to life in prison without parole. Then this case airs on Unsolved Mysteries because this was a situation where there was, a, there was a major theory out there that Patricia didn't actually kill her son, that he had a rare genetic disorder. And so they kind of presented it that way. And that is when William Sly, he was chairman of the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at St. Louis University. He saw this case and he said, hmm. I have an idea here. So he was actually able to obtain blood samples of Ryan Stallings and he tested those blood samples himself because he felt that MMA was actually the cause of death just based on the story, just based on being like it being seen, him seeing it. And when he took those blood samples and he ran those tests, he actually confirmed that Ryan Stallings did not die of poisoning. He died of MMA. But what about those blood samples that had antifreeze and acetone like what what was that about so i guess he sent tissue samples and blood samples to several different labs kind of blindly and they all kind of came back with mixed results and inconclusive results and what they determined was that the results the hospital initially found based on their initial testing was they were taken the blood the samples were taken after they'd already started to treat ryan stallings from what i'm understanding if i'm understanding this correctly and so what they think is that those levels of with the antifreeze and the in the acetone were probably from the treatments they were giving him prior to taking samples. So they then take this to another specialist, a renowned geneticist who was at Yale University, and this geneticist confirmed that Ryan Stallings died of MMA. And these medical professionals, these incredibly intelligent human beings, who this is what they specialize in, with their actual testing being done, they told like the prosecution after the fact after she's already been convicted that she's innocent she didn't kill her son she didn't poison him those the the testing that they did at the hospital was it was done wrong it was bad it was done after he'd already been getting treatment which could show those signs of those particular things in his system ryan stallings died of mma he died of a genetic disease a rare genetic disease which now is confirmed to also be affecting his brother who had no contact alone ever with Patricia. And they would also come up with the fact that Patricia Stallings had really bad representation at her trial. And so they asked if she could, they appealed and said she deserves a new trial simply based on the fact that she got inadequate defense. And so they actually released her on July 30th, 1991 and said, okay, we'll order a new trial. However, on September 30th, 1991, the prosecution would come out and say, we no longer are going to be prosecuting this case. We do firmly believe now that Patricia Stallings is innocent. She did not kill her son. He was not poisoned. We know without a shadow of a doubt that he now, we now know he died of a genetic disease. There was no question about it. There was, it was rock solid evidence, nothing that can be disputed. 
And so they held a press conference announcing and saying, you know, we apologize to Patricia and David for putting you guys through this. This was our mistake. You know, we, we fucked up. And at that press conference, they also announced that little DJ will be now released back into full custody to Patricia and David. And so Patricia got to go home with her husband and her son. And, you know, he's at that point, DJ was doing really well. He, he was being treated for this MMA now that they know kind of what is actually happening with him. And they were just excited. We get our life back and we get to raise our son, get a, a second chance here. This is an incredible chance we have. Patricia and David would end up suing the initial hospital for their shitty lab work um, for for basically because they they were the catalyst. They were the ones who started this. They were the ones who initially instigated this whole like uh, I think was killed and poisoned by you know the mom. Eventually they would settle in 1993. They would three. They would settle out of court uh, with an an unknown amount of money. They got um, you know another 20 ish years with DJ. But on September 17th, 2013, at the age of 23, DJ Stallings did eventually pass away from, I believe, this MMA genetic disease. David Stallings passed away in 2019 at the age of 57. He had been suffering a very lengthy illness. In the end, Patricia really lost her whole family. Uh, she lost all of them to illness, and she was accused of killing one of them. And that's, you know, that's, I, I don't know if there's anything worse uh, other than your child dying, being accused of killing your child, knowing full well you didn't do it. But, you know, at least she wasn't in prison for a, a super long period of time. Eventually justice was served for her and she was cleared of any wrongdoing. And so she never should have gone through it, but she did. And it's just, it is what it is, unfortunately. But this is a, a great example of how even sometimes science can be wrong. Uh, it's not usually wrong. And it's not really necessarily the science that's wrong. It's I think it's the interpretation of the, the particular science done by people who were not really experienced in it. And that's what led to all of this. I think the science was probably done correctly. It was just read wrong. <laughs> And the courts and the jury, they believed it. And so in the end, Patricia Stallings, an accused killer, was freed from prison. And in a way, uh, she got the justice that she rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case. True crime, a Rooney, Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, as usual, please subscribe to this channel if you like true crime and give the video a like and all that jazz. Follow me over on a couple different TikTok pages uh, that I tell short form true crime stories. The links are in the link tree in the description of this video below. And the links also pop up here in this corner at some point in the beginning and at the end of the video. Um, so follow that if you want. Also in the link tree below, you will find my merch store. We have like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff like that, nothing super fancy, but we do ship worldwide. So check it out if you want. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really super duper quick email with just the name of the case or the individual that it happened to, where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is 6,300 plus names long. I can't promise you when I'll cover that case because I picked them at random each time, but I will get to it eventually, I promise. So, but anyway, battery's about to die. That is the end of this video. And I will see you for the next one. So ta-ta for now. True crime. Arunis. Mm-hmm. No.